How do you think about or define wisdom in in daily life today? You know, and, and I have to really fall back again on Buddhist teachings and that the traditional, there are three key insights that are seen as sort of primary and 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 really overarching elements of Buddhist wisdom. They're the insight into impermanence, the insight into suffering, and the insight into not-self. And some of these, uh, the, like the insight into impermanence, is the is very simple and a co- common wisdom. Everything changes. Everybody knows that. The idea that self is a creation <laughs> or a construction is like way far from that in terms of common wisdom or, you know, and that's one that people struggle with a lot. But the question around suffering, the kind of universality of suffering is also one that people can resist. But but if it's put in the, you know, the right terms, I think it's it's understood when we say that there's this unsatisfactory nature to life and it's because everything is impermanent then the question around self becomes the simpler way to get at it is to realize how self-centeredness and selfishness cause suffering you know and and to see that who we think we are is something that changes over time so there is not some stable version of yourself all you have to do is look at a picture of yourself as a child and realize well that's not me and and so then the question becomes how do we create this and that's you know a whole other series of podcasts in terms of that question of how we apply that in our daily lives which i think is what you're asking there these three insights actually are really really helpful to keep in mind so remembering oh this is impermanent. It's going to change. We know, like, that's a very freeing thing. Like, okay, I'm going to get through this. I've got a cold, but I'll be okay by next week. And, you know, all the things that we kind of are able to just remember, okay, it's impermanent. Seeing suffering is more about, oh, am I creating suffering for myself right now? Oh, how am I doing that? So remembering that if I am uncomfortable, it's usually because I'm kind of creating it with my own mind. That's very helpful. And then around self, seeing how like, oh, like I'm really upset because that person said something to me that affected my ego. Like, ah, you know, don't take it personally. That's the the shorthand for it, like, just don't take it personally. And we see like, oh yeah, when I, if I don't take it personally, I get rid of that problem. But I also have an opportunity to, to work with people and to solve things and to get through things much easier. If I'm stuck and it's all about me, it, it, that creates a lot more, a lot of problems. When it's not about me, when I can say, as I just did to you a few moments ago, maybe I'm wrong. So we can see that actually humility is tied in with attachment to self. And and yeah, that's it's a well-known quality that's very freeing is humility. So all of these elements, these, you know, impermanence, suffering, not self, are very practical, useful, and and the ideas and insights that that I absolutely carry with me every day and have to keep referring to and reminding myself because of course the tendency is to get caught in the opposite <laughs>